Hello, and welcome to this edition of Trinity in 20. It is good to be with you on this Sunday day. As we begin, I would offer to you the gospel lesson for this second Sunday of Easter, and it is from the Gospel of St. John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was also called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other, other disciples said to Thomas, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, unless I see the marks of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I shall not believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt. Believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, those which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. This past Lenten season, I read a Lenten devotional study called the, from the Ignatian Solidarity Network. And in that devotional, there, there was a devotion that came out every week, and it came in our email. And the devotion for Easter Sunday morning, the last one in the series, was written by Father Greg Boyle. Father Boyle is famously the founder of Homeboy Industries in Los Angeles, uh, has worked extensively with those who feel excluded from community, expressing love, particularly those who are part of gang communities in Los Angeles. And this was his lesson, his reflection for Easter Sunday morning, and I would like to share it with you. Jose got up to speak at the podium in a gym filled with teenagers. He is 37 years old. 20 of those years have been spent behind bars. He retrieves his first memory. I am five years old, and I keep standing between my dad and my mom when he keeps beating her. The father continues to swat the kid away, but Jose keeps returning. Finally, the father goes to the kitchen and gets the boiling pot of beans on the stove and dumps it on his son. The entire gym gasps. All of my skin peeled off. I didn't go to the hospital because my dad said nobody snitches in this house. Jose is first arrested at 10 years old for selling drugs for his father. He returns home, doesn't want to sell drugs anymore, and so the father throws Jose out of the house. He is now 11 and homeless. He joins a gang. Jose says, I am grateful to my father for teaching me how not to be one. I cherish my boys and I tell them how much I love them. I play hide and seek. My boys taught me because I never knew. I love them as I never was. Poet David White tells us, to remember the other world in this world is to live in your true inheritance. The risen Christ cannot be found among the dead. Instead, the resurrection locates us in the here and now. We are only saved, after all, in the present moment. None of us will live forever, but we can surely live in the forever. The risen life invites us to a full participation in our true inheritance, allowing ourselves to be taught the game of hide and seek when our childhood has been denied us. Last week in my homily, I used the words justice, truth, and love. 
and that the resurrection is the beginning of these things, that the resurrection is the completion of Jesus' work that leads to justice, truth, and love. But to say that, to say those words, and to say that the resurrection is the mark of God's work towards justice, truth, and love, is to also say that we recognize in this world there is injustice, there is in falsehoods, there is hatred, and that the work of Jesus continues in this place, the work of the resurrection, the work of the world that is yet to come begins in our lives because we acknowledge that its work is justice, truth, and love, and we live in a world that does not experience those things. And it reminds me of this story, right? The story for today where, where Thomas wants to see Jesus. We've called Thomas doubting Thomas, but Jesus comes to him not so much about his doubts, but to say, come here and put your finger in my hand. Put your hand in my side. In, in effect, it is as if he is saying, fill the hole in my hand. Fill the hole in the gash in my side. You, good friend, come here with me. You, friend, fill that hole where justice and truth and love do not exist. Bring your heart here to me and put your hand and your finger here and fill the gap for me. Fill that gash that is in this world. Fill those holes that are in this world. Do not, do not think that that's not your work. Fill those spaces. Fill them for me. Fill them for Jesus. Because that is what his call to us is, to, to be willing to go to those places, even though we have our doubts, even though we're uncertain, but the knowledge that, that we can in our lives find our lives with our fingers, with our hands, placing them in Jesus' hands. This is not a story of Jesus upbraiding Thomas, but an invitation to truly be who you are. St. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, used the words faith, hope, love. It is the same as justice, truth, and love, to, to be the embodiment of those things, to fill those holes, to remember this broken world, to remember that it is born in the body of Jesus, and by our very presence, to be able to place our fingers in the holes of the hands of our neighbors, of our community, of our world. There is no lack of this world. There is no lack of injustice. There is no lack of the injustice that, that is born of hatred, of, of animosity, of, of, of hard feelings, of, of misunderstanding. There is no lack of that. There is no lack of falsehoods that are spread, of, of mistruths that are conveyed, of misunderstandings that we carry on with. There is no lack of hatred that leads even ultimately to war. But in this story, Jesus invites us to say, friends, friends, come here, come here, come here with me, and place your finger here. Do not doubt in the power of justice, truth, and love. Do not doubt that he brings that to us. Do not doubt that you are the carriers of justice, truth, and love, and that your lives can fill the holes where those things do not exist, that your life is precious, that you are invited, along with the risen Lord, to live in the forever in the moment right now. Our bodies will not be here forever, but we do live in that moment, that moment of forever in Jesus, plugging the holes of hands covering up the slashes of sides, proclaiming justice, truth, and love. May that be so in our lives, and may we give thanks that we are asked to put our fingers in those holes. Amen. Friends, it is good to be with you and to share part of this morning together with you. We would always welcome you to be part of the ministry of Trinity English and to come and join us in the many and various things that we do. As you would see on our website, please come and be part of our life together in whatever way works with you, if we could. 
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day, for our opportunity to be together, for your presence among us. As you came among those disciples so long ago on that night of the resurrection, we pray that you would help us to feel your presence. Now breathe on us, give us your spirit, give us your strength, and allow us to know your peace. Guard and protect us in all of this time because we know that you have asked us to do dangerous things, to proclaim words of justice, truth, and love to this community, to our families, to our friends, everywhere that we would be, and that by doing so, we place our fingers in the holes of your hands. We place our hand in the gash that is in your side, and we bind up the wounds of the world that you love so much. Give us strength for these days. Give us courage and hope as we do these things. We pray that your presence would be on all of those who have asked for our prayers, all of those in our parish community whose health, whose well-being has been compromised. Give them health and strength and healing in this time. We rejoice with all of those who rejoice. We give thanks for the good things that are rolled out onto the lives of so many people and so many of your children. Allow us to rejoice in the goodness that we see everywhere in this world. Guard and protect us in this week and keep us safe in your care. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.